Dr. Rayner, could you explain the term roaming and what are its implications for a consumer? Roaming, roaming is uh, quite simple. Roaming is when you are using your mobile phone outside of Qatar. For example, uh, when you are on holidays, you are making voice calls or receiving voice calls, when you are making or receiving SMS, but also when you are using mobile data services. For example, browsing the internet or chatting with your friends. Roaming is a fantastic service. It is quite versatile, it is really handy, but please be aware, it can come with a price tag. Oh, that's uh, good information. Now, uh, moving on, what should a consumer take care of when using roaming services out of Qatar? Ani, it, I think it's most important it is that you know what you are being charged for, that you are fully aware when you are being charged and how much you are being charged. I would like to quote three examples, three different services you are normally using when you are roaming. First of all, as we all know and what we use most is voice. When you're making a voice call, uh, you are being charged, and when you are, are receiving a voice call, you are being charged. Please be aware, depending on your service provider and depending on the country where you're going to, you're going, you can be charged different rates, different rates when you're calling the country you're in, when you're calling back home to Qatar, or when you're calling a third country. With SMS, uh, we had lots of confusion uh, in the consumer section when making SMS, uh, which means when sending SMS or when receiving SMS. When you're sending an SMS, you're normally being charged for. When you are receiving an SMS, you're normally not being charged for. The reason is you cannot avoid receiving an SMS. And the third big product I'd like to talk about is data roaming. We all know nowadays we have all those smartphones, like for example we have a Blackberry or we have an iPhone. Uh, with those uh, smartphones you can use all kinds of data services. Data services, for example, when you receive emails or when you send emails, when you're browsing the internet or when you are downloading some movies or some uh, video clips or some uh, music from an application on the internet. Also, please be aware of uh, that when you are chatting with your friends on your BlackBerry, this is also causing data traffic. You just talked about the different uh, types of uh, handsets available in the market. Uh, could you uh, throw some insight on, do these different types of handsets impact roaming services? Absolutely, Annie. For example, in the good old days we were used to our typical handsets, those handsets uh, were able to make calls or you could receive calls with them or you could also do SMSs. But nowadays with those smartphones, for example to, uh, to, uh, to show an Apple iPhone or a Blackberry, these smartphones are in effect, they are very powerful mini computers. Uh, you can do a host of things with them. You can read your emails, you can get traffic updates, you can organize uh, your calendar, plus on top you can also send and receive calls. Uh, many people are not aware of that uh, browsing the internet, downloading music clips, chatting with your friends uh, is basically causing some data roaming and data roaming can be extremely expensive. For example, uh, just the other day a friend of mine came back from a five-day business trip and uh, he was just uh, uh, browsing the, the emails he got from his work and he was faced with a bill with a couple of hundred reals. So please be aware of all these services, all this new technology, it gives you fantastic opportunities, but please be aware of and inform yourself beforehand what your service provider can do for you in order to reduce your bill. Okay. How can a consumer control his or her mobile telephone bill? I think there are many different ways of how you can control your bill. One way is of course first of all consult with your telecom service provider and the second way is there are many things you can do on your device. For example when you are asking your telecom service provider ask him if there are special packages or special bundles for international data roaming. Ask your service provider is there 
uh, a cap or is there a limit you can set above which uh, your international services will be switched off? Or you can also ask your uh, service provider to block certain services on your account. And then there are a couple of uh, measures you can do on your handset. For example, what you can do is you can switch off your data roaming capabilities if you don't need your emails and if you don't need to chat and SMS with your friends. Or there's also another host of uh, things you can do in order to reduce a bill. You could, for example, tell your friends that you are abroad. Normally, for example, my mother is quite uh, knowledgeable about telecommunication charges, and she really understands that if you don't talk for half an hour, but for five minutes, or she understands if I just send an S SMS, Mom, I'm going to be home in two hours, please wait till then. Or, for example, you could also use some email services, or you can use voice over IP in local internet cafes, or what many people also do is they take an old uh, handset with them and get a prepaid card from a local service provider in the country they're in. So I think uh, depending on the service provider, depending on your package, there are quite a couple of things you can do sensibly uh, without losing touch with your contacts in Qatar. Thanks for the handy tips, Reina. Now, uh, my last question is that in case of a dispute or a complaint about telecom uh, products or services in Qatar, what should consumers do? First of all, Annie, try to resolve the problem with your service provider. Ask for a complaint number, take down the name, the full name of the call center agent, and also take down the solution which was promised by the service provider, and also take down till when this, uh, your problem should have been solved. If this doesn't uh, lead to anything, if it's not fruitful, call the service provider again, and if after a sensible amount of time your problem has not been resolved, you can always uh, file a complaint with ICT Qatar. And here it really comes in handy when you have all the details and the complaint number with the service provider. As we as ICT Qatar, we are trying to resolve the problem for you with the service provider. You can contact us in various ways. You can call us, you can email us, you can write us a fax, or you can also visit us. We are opposite the General Post Office, next to the Commercial Bank Plaza. Thank you, Reina. It was a very insightful session.